Ladies and gentlemen, the Chesterfield, their best for you players, bring you Dean Martin, Jerry Lewis, and Mitzi Gaynor in a story of the king size trials and tribulations of a regular Hollywood couple. <laughs> the heart rending drama of a fading picture star whose agent can't get him a job, but whose wife, who has now become the number one box office attraction, supports him. Entitled, The Fading Picture Star, Whose Agent Can't Get Him a Job, But Whose Wife, Who Has Now Become the Number One Box Office Attraction, Supports Him Story? I sent for you because you're my husband's agent, and I'm worried. I haven't seen my husband in six days. Don't worry, Cynthia. I phoned around town and located him. He's at art school. At art school? Yes, when I phoned, I heard someone say, draw one and put a head on it. <laughs> well, I'm back, Cynthia, and as usual, I find you with mud pack all over your face. Oh, Irving, darling, kiss me. Okay. Smile so I can find your lips. <laughs> oh, Irving, my darling. You walk like you've been hurt. Well, I was drinking all night. And when I left the bar room and started my home, I had an accident. What happened? Somebody stepped on my back. Oh. <laughs> Irving, I'm ashamed of you. Every night in a bar room. Yeah, and tonight somebody called me a has-been star who's supported by his wife. So I hit him over the head with a bar stool, and he hit me with a piano bench. And the bartender sucked him with a beer bottle, and somebody threw him through the window. Then what happened? Well, before you knew it, an argument started. <laughs> <laughs> oh, darling, I'm so worried. Yesterday you tried to blow your brains out. This morning you tried to take poison. And this afternoon you tried to throw yourself in front of a truck. Irving, I'm your friend. Tell me, is something troubling you? Plenty. <laughs> <laughs> My wife is a big picture star, and I'm a nothing. I understand nothing. I'm sick, sick, sick. Do you hear? Sick, sick, sick. <laughs> oh, what? Wait till I turn the page. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm sick of being supported by you. Everything in this house is yours. The drapes, the pool, the furniture. I defy you to name one thing in this house that's mine. Please, dear, your cigarette ashes are on the rug. Okay, that's one. Name another thing that's mine. <laughs> you mean the rug is yours? No, the cigarette ashes. Oh, <laughs> Any more complaints? Plenty. You're so busy at the studios, you couldn't even find time to have children. That's true. So I had to have them. <laughs> well, what are you complaining about? It hasn't ruined your figure. <laughs> Sit up. Every morning you dress in a hurry and rush off to the studio, I have to pick up after you. Pick up what? Your false eyelashes, your false hair, your false fingernails. Uh, don't you miss her when she's away? Why should I? She leaves more of her here than when she takes her in. I'm sick, 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 I tell you. You don't fix me any dinner. You don't pay the electric bill. Last night I was left here groping around in the dark. Well, I told you to eat anything you found in the kitchen. I did, and this morning a cat was missing. <laughs> Irving, darling, you couldn't have swallowed the cat. Oh, no? And how come every time I see the dog, my back arches? <laughs> this whole thing is your fault, John. You're my agent. Why can't you get me an acting job? Why? Why? I'll tell you why, you goon head. You never, you never show up for appointments. You're always drunk and sloppy. You got no talent. You can't sing. You can't dance. And you can't act. Excuses, excuses, always excuses. <laughs> Remember, darling, he did get you a job in a Broadway play, but the critics walked out. So what? Lots of critics walk out on plays. Between the first and second syllable? <laughs> darling, you should possess my acting ability. Oh, happy dagger, this is thy sheath. There rust and let me die. That's the death scene from Romeo and Juliet. Smells like it's been dead a long time. <laughs> and I wish I was. Ah, uh, don't destroy your marriage, my children. Yours is the true partnership that comes but once. Two people with love and adoration in their eyes, peace and contentment in their hearts. 
walking down life's highways and byways together hand in hand. I think I'm going to flow up. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Irving, give our marriage another chance. For you, I'll cook, I'll wash, I'll sew. Keep going, maybe you'll come to something I like. <laughs> Darling, we should always tell each other how we really feel inside. I love you, Irving. I love you, Irving. Now you say it. Oh, I love you, Irving. <laughs> <laughs> nope, it'll never work. We're both in love with the same man. <laughs> <laughs> He's not worth your love, Cynthia. Leave him and marry me. Oh, no, you don't. We'll fight for it. Fight? Irving, I didn't think you loved me. I don't, but I love fighting. <laughs> well, take your choice, gentlemen. Guns or bare fists? I'll use bare fists. Good, I'll use a gun. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, you'll both use guns. Here. At the count of three, you'll both turn and defile. Then, with one of us out of the way, the argument will be settled. Right. Ready? Mm -hmm. One, two, three, fire! Now that settles that. You and I are engaged. Come here and kiss me. Please give me the ring, Bobby. 